Brothers and sisters, we are living in times unlike any other. The messages given to Luz de Maria are not just some distant prophecy, they are reality unfolding before our very eyes. What she has revealed to us is terrifying, yet it is a wake-up call we cannot ignore. A great superpower, which has been at the pinnacle of global power, will fall. Not in years, not in decades, but in a single day. And let me tell you something, this fall will not be because of some external force or sudden act of nature. No, this is a fall brought on by the corruption of the human heart. This superpower has embraced the sins of greed, of pride, and has turned away from God. It's the country that has claimed to stand for freedom, to stand for justice, but has turned its back on the very foundation that allowed it to flourish, God's truth. Brothers and sisters, make no mistake, it is nearing the end of this nation's reign. You see the signs. The leaders, who once professed faith, now bow to idols. Idols of money, of power, of pleasure. This is no longer a nation under God, it is a nation under man. And as history tells us, when man becomes the god of his own land, that land is destined to fall. Look at the upcoming election. What do we see? Chaos, lies, deception. We know that there is no longer a legitimate fight for what is right and good. It is all about control, all about securing more power for the godless elite. They are manipulating every aspect of this election to ensure that the people of God remain silenced. The systems in place are rigged against us, and when this election is over, we will see the full unveiling of their agenda. The truth is, this nation has been falling for years, slowly poisoning itself with laws that go against God's commandments. Abortion, same-sex marriage, the transgender movement, all these abominations have been codified into law, celebrated by the masses. This is not a slip or a small fall. This is a nation on its knees, worshipping false gods and daring to call it progress. They are no different from the ancient civilizations that fell in disgrace, Babylon, Rome. It's no coincidence that Revelation 18 speaks of the great city, Babylon, which was destroyed in an instant because of its corruption, its filth. It stood mighty, thinking it was invincible, but God's judgment comes swiftly for those who defy him. What's about to happen, brothers and sisters, will not be a slow decline. We are not talking about a mere recession or another war on foreign soil. This is a collapse unlike anything we've ever seen. The foundations are crumbling from within. The economy, which has been built on greed and exploitation, will collapse overnight. The stock market will plummet, banks will fail, people will panic. The streets will be filled with unrest, not just political but moral. You will see people fighting over food, over money, over survival. The civil structure that has kept this country together will fall apart. And this is all because we have forgotten God. The real tragedy here, the real horror, is that this could have been avoided. God's mercy is endless, His love is boundless, but we have rejected it at every turn. We've kicked Him out of our schools, out of our courts, out of our families. We've allowed our children to be indoctrinated with lies, telling them that they don't need God, that they can create their own truth. We've stood by as the media has mocked our faith, as Hollywood has perverted everything sacred. This nation was once a beacon of hope because it was built on Christian principles. Now, it is a beacon of sin, and we are watching its final days. Luz de Maria has warned us of what is coming, but this is not just a warning. This is a reality that is fast approaching. And the only thing that can stop this total destruction now is prayer. If we as a people do not fall to our knees, if we do not cry out to the Lord in repentance, there will be no hope left. 
I'm not talking about a casual prayer here and there, or saying grace before dinner. I'm talking about fervent, desperate prayer. I'm talking about setting aside time every day to weep before the Lord, to ask Him for mercy. Because if we don't, brothers and sisters, there will be no mercy. We will have sealed our fate. Look at what happened in Nineveh. God was ready to destroy them because of their wickedness, but they repented. They turned away from their sin, and God stayed His hand. But look at Sodom and Gomorrah. They did not repent. They continued in their filth, and they were wiped from the face of the earth. That's where we are right now, teetering between the fate of Nineveh and the fate of Sodom. If we as Christians do not rise up in prayer, if we do not fast and beg for God's mercy, then this nation will suffer the same fate as Sodom. This fall will have consequences far beyond the borders of this nation. When this superpower collapses, the world will feel it. Economies around the globe will crash, alliances will be broken, wars will break out. Nations that have been waiting for this moment will rise up to claim power. These are nations that do not honor God, that are enemies of His people. They will seek to spread their godless influence even further. They will come for us. The persecution of Christians is not something far off in the future, it is happening now, and it will only get worse when this nation falls. There will be no safe place left if we don't turn back to God. This is not a message of despair. This is a call to action. God is merciful. He is waiting with open arms for His people to return to Him. But the time is short. We don't have decades to figure this out. The warnings have been given, and now we must respond. We must fight this battle in the spiritual realm. We must put on the armor of God and stand firm. The devil has been working tirelessly to bring this nation down, and we have led him. But it's not too late. We can still turn this around. But it will take prayer. It will take repentance. It will take a full rejection of the sin that has infiltrated every corner of this country. Brothers and sisters, the time is now. We cannot wait for someone else to fix this. It is up to us, the people of God, to rise up in prayer, to fast, to cry out for mercy. God has not abandoned us, but if we continue down this path, we are abandoning Him. And when we do, the fall will be swift and devastating. Let us return to God before it is too late. Pray like your life depends on it, because it does. Pray for mercy, pray for healing, and above all, pray that God will forgive us and spare this nation from the judgment it so rightly deserves.